Good morning. It's a pleasure to join with you as we worship God today. Uh, we live separate lives very much so at the moment, but as we worship, we gather together, not just with the members of St Barnabas, but with all the company on earth and in heaven. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. The Lord, our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. As I've already said, we come from scattered lives to meet with God. So wherever you are right now, let's take a moment to recognise God's presence with you, with me, with us all here on earth. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship him together. We're going to sing that very famous hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that sought my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first. forgiveness and his peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you to the newness of life. 
to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We listen to our first reading. A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. The faith of the Canaanite woman. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the last few weeks, we've been thinking about um, the importance of faith uh, as a means by which we can know God. Jesus is teaching those around him that it doesn't matter whether you have faith the size of a mustard seed, all things can be achieved. We are saved by him through our faith and our faith comes from God. We pray for faith for ourselves and for others. So it may be that you were last year during Thy Kingdom Come praying for some people to know faith. I wonder if you have seen any fruits of those prayers. And if not, don't stop. We need to be persistent and consistent in our prayers. But faith comes to others through our praying, through the power of the Spirit, and through our sharing as well, by our words and by our actions. What God calls us to have is a heart for him. He wants us to love him in the way that Jesus has been teaching that he loves us. And that's really important. God knows what's inside of us. Now, we've all known people who profess faith, faith and yet perhaps don't live that out. None of us will get it right all of the time. Uh, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. So perfection is not expected as a means of salvation, but that we would try to walk in the shoes of Jesus is expected of us. And when we go wrong, uh, we are called back to make an account, to ask for forgiveness, and then to move on with him. Now in this story that we hear today about the Canaanite woman, if we were looking in Luke's gospel, we would hear about the Syrophoenician woman. It's a very similar story, whether the same or different doesn't really matter. Similar parts of the world. They were people from outside of the Jewish tradition. And I think there are two things that are important in this story. First, that this is a woman, someone who the traditional teachings from the Jewish laws would leave out. Uh, the Jewish faith uh, was passed from male to male. We saw last week in the story of the feeding of the 5,000, how women and children were not counted. So here, Jesus is speaking with a woman. We need to know that in many times and in many ways, Jesus uh, worked with, spoke to, uh, healed and empowered those who were normally outside of the expected group of people. And the second thing is on a similar theme, the fact that this woman is not Jewish, she's Canaanite, and she has faith. She sees Jesus as the Son of God in a way that Peter struggles already. The disciples don't always recognise. We saw last week how Peter loses um, Jesus in his sights, and by doing that, he falls into the water and has to be rescued. This woman, on the other hand, comes to Jesus with enormous faith, asking him to heal his daughter. We all want the best for our children. And this woman 
puts her faith in the man Jesus. She says, I know what I've heard, I've seen. And he says to her, but I've come to bring the Jewish people, God's chosen people back uh, into faith. And she says to him, but, you know, even dogs are allowed the crumbs for under the table. And Jesus, uh, I suppose, has a moment of banter with him, with her. It's as though he allows her to convince him that even in, in the fixed purpose of his walk towards um, his death on the cross and resurrection, he can be deviated. He is allowed to look outside the Jewish people and to bring all people into faith. And this was a really important point for Matthew in particular to make. Matthew was a Jew and we understand that Matthew's gospel was written in order to teach the Jewish people about the, um, the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. It begins with the lineership of Jesus and it moves through uh, how Jesus fulfills the prophecies and now how his teaching is in line with um, the Old Testament but how it becomes even more than that. So how Jesus teaches that we should live beyond the rules, but how our hearts ought are the thing that God looks at. And importantly, Matthew is teaching the people around him that the good news of Jesus Christ is not just for the Jewish people, it's for all people. And right at the end of Matthew's gospel, we hear the great commission to go out to the people of all nations and to share the good news, to teach and preach and baptize. And here we see um, why that is an important message because it comes from Jesus's actions. He allows his ministry to begin to move outside of the Jewish people. And because of this woman's faith in him, he says, your faith has made you well, has made her well, has, has healed your daughter. Go home, you'll find her, her, that she is okay. Again, the importance and the power of faith over rules. It doesn't mean we can live our lives any way that we like. That's not the message. We should be people who live according to the words that we say. But words alone are empty. Uh, just uh, the, 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 just that the appearance that we have, showing people how we are, is nothing if we are not changed on the inside. And God sees that. It's a reminder once again to us that we cannot make judgment on others because God sees all and knows the hearts of people in a way that we do not. And it's also a reminder uh, when we feel that we've been wronged by other people, that God knows our hearts too. He knows the sincerity of our faith and the way that we want to live it out. So what does this story teach us for this week? Well, first of all, we've thought about the fact that um, Jesus is able and willing to share that good news to all. And that's the message for us as we go out and talk to people about our faith that we can share it with all. It's a message for those of us who have a, a church building, that those doors are not closed to anybody. It doesn't matter about class or creed, whether they look like us or dress like us or even behave like us initially. Uh, people who are not Christian cannot be expected to just behave like Christians uh, as, as Christians should. And we know Christians who don't always behave in the way that they should but our do doors must always be open for all and our homes and our hospitality and our willing to be friends and to love others must be available to all and isn't that good news isn't it good because that means that we are also not prevented from being loved and cared for and saved and rescued by God uh, we poor sinners we too can be loved by all I invite you this week to go and look as you are out and about, and I know more of you are, at those people who others maybe ignore, um, to, to be able to see people in the way that God may see them, to have the eyes of Christ as you look on others with love. And also remember the miraculous way in which Jesus 
was willing to help this women, woman with faith. You don't need a perfect faith. You need to keep praying for faith. And all things can be achieved through faith. May God bless you and bring you faith this week. Amen. And now we join together in our prayers. Let us pray. As we come together on this 11th Sunday after Trinity, let us remember in prayer the three distinct persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We pray for guidance from the Father through the Son that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit in all that we think, say and do. When we feel lonely, help us to remember our church family is always there. When we feel abandoned by all, help us to feel included. Where Covid has tightened its grip, allow us to remember that it will loosen in time. When we worry needlessly and know our problems in reality are small, give us comfort. When the world is too busy, give us solace and peace. When we forget to pray, help us set aside time to share with you. When our words to others can be harsh, let us replace them with mild phrases. When we have no money, hearten us that God will provide for those who live in faith. When we face bad news, remind us that the worst day is only 24 hours. When we feel scared, help us recall that Jesus is always there. When we meet a stranger, remember a smile can transform someone's day. When we have doubt, let us put our trust in you. When we meet the spiritually ignorant, help us to educate them. When evil appears, let us always strive to be good. When asked to give in your name, let us not be miserly, but generous in our giving. Always remembering, in a world where hate is abundant, that your love enfolds us all. When we hear fake news, enable us to discern what is real. When we meet the narrow-minded, let us enable them to see the broader picture. We pray for the sick and vulnerable. May they know your healing touch and shelter. We think of those we have loved who are no longer with us. We think of those whose minds are confused and wish for peace and acceptance for them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue our prayers with the Collect Prayer, the prayer that joins together all the prayers. It's, uh, it's intended to be a summative prayer of the prayers of the week that we have prayed and a prayer that we can join with. Uh, with all who worship today, the 10th Sunday after Trinity. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer, in the traditional version. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our second hymn, that very famous hymn, Trust and Obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey.
whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. The Son who ascended to the heights pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in ministry. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.